All right, with this week's module, we're going to take a closer look at the structure and function of, uh, of the tree as an individual biological organism. We will examine the tree's function as an autotroph, or primary producer within the food chain, examine the resources a tree needs to survive, and also look at some strategies trees employ to reproduce and compete within their respective ecosystems. Something that we discussed within the biome lecture, which deserves some closer examination, uh, are the environmental resources required for trees to become established and survive. Uh, the first being sunlight, which acts as the energy source required for trees to conduct photosynthesis. The presence of water is required by trees as the electron in the water molecule is, is required for photosynthesis to occur. Also, plant cells require the presence of water to remain viable. Mineral nu nutrients present within the soil are necessary for plants to develop tissue or similar cells that carry out a specific physiological function. Um, adequate physical space to grow and develop is required as well. The process of photosynthesis should not be new for you guys, but we're going to we're going to look at it here briefly. So it's, it's really the process by which trees act as producers. It's how a tree develops its own food from environmental resources. So what exactly is going on in this process? On, on the left side of the equation you have CO2 or carbon dioxide, a gas that's present in the atmosphere naturally. So CO2 is released during respiration by both plants and animals um, as nutrients are used to power the construction of organic compounds within those organisms. CO2 is also released into the atmosphere through decomposition, uh, the burning of organic materials, and the burning of fossil fuels. Trees absorb CO2 um, and utilizing the light energy of the sun strip an electron from a water molecule. Trees convert the sun's light energy to chemical energy and a reaction occurs that converts the carbon dioxide to an organic compound or, or sugar. So oxygen is a byproduct of this process. The organic compound produced is essentially the food source uh, for the tree, for, for lack of a better word. Different parts of the tree play different roles in the production of carbohydrates, uh, the gathering of environmental resources for this process to occur, and the transport of water and nutrients throughout the tree. Uh, beginning first with the leaf, this is where, the, this is where photosynthesis actually occurs. Leaves absorb sunlight, and this is where the transfer of electrons from water molecules to carbon dioxide molecules occurs. And again, sugar or carbohydrates are the end result of this process, with oxygen released as a byproduct. This slide is just a closer look at the components of a leaf. The primary features we're going to focus on are the chloroplast, the xylem and phloem, and the stomate. So chloroplasts are the plant cell organelles that capture and store the sun's energy for photosynthesis. The xylem and phloem comprise the vascular system of the tree, which we're going to examine further in a moment. Uh, the stomate, is, or the stoma, is where gas exchange occurs in the leaf. Uh, CO2 and O2, carbon dioxide and oxygen, are released here through respiration and photosynthesis, respectively. And this is also where carbon dioxide and oxygen enter the leaf as well. Water vapor is released here also during uh, the process of transpiration. Just to be a little more specific and also to reiterate the, the description of this process, the, the chloroplast is, absorbs light energy from the red and blue portions of the, of the light spectrum. And, and this is why we view foliage as green. It's the, it's the portion of the light spectrum that isn't absorbed by the chloroplast. Some of the energy absorbed is stored for future use, and some is used immediately to remove the electrons from the water molecules needed for the synthesis of carbohydrates. Um, you know, and the carbo these carbohydrates are essentially the organic compounds the tree uses for its food. This also plays into why the leaves of deciduous trees turn color and fall in autumn. During this time of year, there's less available sunlight, and the colder temperatures limit the water available for trees to utilize. Trees use energy not only to grow, but to maintain their existing structures, um, you know, to maintain living tissue that has already been created. So during this time of year, when environmental resources are really limited, it's more important physiologically for the tree to maintain what it has already produced, what it what is already present, 
um, rather than allocating rather than allocate energy to growing additional tissue. So trees essentially halt growth by not producing chlorophyll. Chlorophyll being the pigment in chloroplasts responsible for light absorption. So now that all portions of the light spectrum are reflected, leaves appear as different colors rather than just green. Eventually, these leaves die and fall off due to the lack of resources available. The importance of water to the growth and survival of a tree cannot be understated. Of all the environmental resources, um, water is typically the most limiting factor for plant growth. The availability of water is a function of several environmental factors, including climate, um, you know, and, and the precipitation that results from that particular climate, uh, soil type, soil texture, topography, and, and aspect, you know, position of the, f of the forest land on the landscape. So the, um, again, cells need to be surrounded by water to remain viable, and the electron provided by the water molecule is required for photosynthesis to actually occur. So in a nutshell, this, this fundamental process of photosynthesis involves the tree's ability to absorb an atmospheric gas, uh, in this case CO2, take water from the atmosphere and the soil, and produce organic compounds utilizing the energy of the sun. You know, obviously, it's, it, should be clearly, it, it should be clear the importance of, of the release of oxygen as a byproduct. The, uh, this process is at the beginning of the food chain. So some animals eat plants. Some animals eat other animals, some eat both, but all uh, are reliant on the plant's ability to produce its own food through the process of photosynthesis, through the process that, that was just described. And so those are the leaves. The, uh, the next part of the tree that we're going to examine is the stem. In a simplified way, you can think of the stem as kind of like the plumbing within the tree. So the, the vascular system within the tree is responsible for water, sugar, and nutrient transport. And so specifically, the xylem is the part of the vascular system that delivers water from the roots to the foliage. The phloem is responsible for delivering the carbohydrate produced during photosynthesis throughout the rest of the tree, as well as mineral nutrients taken in from the soil. Uh, but the stem provides functions other than just water and nutrient transport. Uh, another primary function is the structural support that it provides the tree. You know, it, al it allows the tree to, to remain standing. This slide here displays the basic parts of a tree stem. So we'll, first, we'll start first with the vascular cambium. And so the, the vascular cambium is displayed in green on the slide. Uh, the cambium is, is what you could think of as the growing portion of the stem. As I just mentioned, the vascular system of the tree consists primarily of the xylem and phloem. The vascular cambium is where these specialized tissues are created. So as a tree grows, uh, cells destined to become phloem tissue are produced outward towards the bark. Uh, again, phloem tissue is responsible for transporting carbohydrates dur produced during photosynthesis and mineral nutrients throughout the tree. When phloem cells expire or die, they become part of the non-living bark. Simultaneously, uh, cells destined to become xylem tissue are produced inward towards the inner portion of the stem. Uh, again, xylem tissue is responsible for transporting water from the roots to the foliage and throughout the rest of the tree. The, the living portion of the stem between the heartwood and the cambium is referred to as sapwood. When xylem cells die, they become part of the non-living heartwood portion of the stem what we know of as, as wood, right, consists of xylem tissue and the organic compound cellulose bound together by the organic polymer lignin. Moving from the leaves to the stem, we're, we're now to the roots. Roots literally anchor the tree to the ground. They also absorb moisture from the soil. Again, this is, in, this is important as water is the most limiting environmental factor in terms of tree survival and growth. Roots also absorb essential chemical elements from the soil. These chemical elements are often referred to as nutrients because their presence is necessary for the tissue development and is necessary for tissue development and biosynthesis within the tree. There are several elements that are essential for tree function. Those required in relatively large amounts are referred to as macronutrients. 
the you know these macronutrients include nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Some secondary macronutrients include calcium, sulfur, and magnesium. There are 11 other essential elements that are required in smaller amounts, uh, and these elements, you know, all of these elements must be obtained by the, by the tree from the soil. And you know, this is the work of the roots, obtaining these elements from the soil. Trees maintain both coarse roots and fine roots. The coarse roots act as essentially underground branches, providing structural support. Uh, some trees that grow in low moisture soils or nutrient poor soils maintain large tap roots that extend uh, pretty far down into the soil profile. The smaller fine roots are responsible for absorbing water and nutrients and they extend laterally throughout the soil, typically no deeper than, than the first 10 inches of soil. There is vascular tissue, um, xylem and phloem, within the entire root system. And Know, essentially moving around what is absorbed. So fine roots also filter out harmful substances that are naturally present in the soil but are toxic to plants. Uh, aluminum is, is an example of a toxic substance that is inherent in soil but toxic to plants. So uh, in addition, roots get assistance in performing these tasks from a symbiotic relationship with soil fungi. The concept of mutualism in nature refers to a relationship between two organisms that is mutually beneficial. In essence, it's the opposite of parasitism, where one species benefits to the detriment of another. Uh, a mutually beneficial relationship exists between the fine roots of trees and a type of fungus called mycorrhiza. The fungus attaches itself to the fine roots of the tree, essentially extending the reach of the fine roots to absorb water and nutrients. Uh, this is especially important for trees growing in a dry, nutrient-poor environment. Uh, fungi are differentiated from plants because they cannot produce their own food through photosynthesis. In this instance, the mycorrhizae is supplied food from the roots of the trees. This is how it benefits from the relationship. So some tree roots also support uh, what are referred to as nitrogen-fixing bacteria, and in, in they support these, these bacteria in a, in a similar way. Uh, the bacteria have the ability to convert atmospheric nitrogen into a form that plant roots can absorb. Uh, the bacteria benefits from the food produced by the tree, and the tree benefits from the increased availability of nitrogen. Remember, nitrogen is uh, an important macronutrient, and the nitrogen that's, that's fixed by this bacteria is made available in a usable form to the tree. Black locust is an example of a tree that grows in association with nitrogen-fixing bacteria.